And we are live. Hi, everyone. Kelly Kay here. Welcome. Today, we'll be speaking with Kim Manis, Director of Product Management for Power BI and Azure Synapse Analytics. We'll be announcing the winners of the Charticulator Challenge. All that and more today on your Power BI Community Show. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kelly Kay. I'm the Community Engagement Lead for the Power BI community. And for those of you who are new today, please um, let us know what you think about our show. And if you want to know a little bit more about our show, our show is all about connecting you, the community, with all things Power BI, how to learn, how to connect, how to download, how to learn advanced um, advanced ideas and features. We talk about um, all of the things that connect you with Power BI. So we talk with MVPs and the rest of the community. You also have an opportunity to submit your beautiful data stories as we have for the Charticulator Challenge. I'm super excited about that. Aren't you, Daniel? Daniel's our producer. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for, for all that the community has come up with. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they have, for sure. Yeah, it's been pretty, pretty interesting, and we'll be announcing everyone today. So a little bit more about the show. We try and connect with you every couple of weeks. We'll be connecting with MVPs. We'll be bringing you some great demos. But it's all about connecting you, the community. Okay, uh, we do have an opportunity for you to win some great or be selected or randomly selected uh, to get some great prizes, some of which are things like the Power BI lanyards and other things that we have available. And so all you have to do is look at the little link below, which is ask your questions here at aka.ms power, oh, sorry, PBI show comment. So go over to the community comment on the show and we'll randomly select people and reach out to you for some uh, and send you some great stuff. Okay, there's another couple of ways that you can connect with Power BI. Of course, you can go to the Power BI blog and you can also look for our monthly feature release update and that's on the Power BI YouTube channel. So join us in any of those arenas. We'll be around. Um, if you want to connect with me, I'm at M S underscore Kelly K on Twitter. Um, so feel free to send out a tweet and let us know how you uh, how you think the show is going and what you'd like to see on the show. Okay, Daniel, I think we should get on with that now, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I hear someone knocking. I, someone I know, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking somebody's knocking on the door too. I think that's sure, probably sure. Kim Manis, the director should, of product. I'll go let her in. Yeah. yeah, I think. Thank you so okay, much. Right, I appreciate no you. <laughs> Today we have Kim Manis, the hey. director of product management for Power BI and Azure Synapse Analytics. Wow, this is awesome. Tell us about your new role. Well, tell us about you. Oh my and God. tell us about your new role. I'm super excited. This is awesome. I'm so glad to be here. Um, I'm a huge fan of the show and the community in general and uh, just love being part of this. So um, so a little about me. Uh, my name is Kim. Uh, I run product for both Power BI and Azure Synapse. I've been on the Power BI team, oh gosh, um, seven, six, seven years now, something like that. Um, and I've worked in all kinds of roles throughout the Power BI team. And then just a, a little under a year ago, uh, I took on the Synapse role as well. And so actually the product teams have come together between Power BI and Synapse. Um, and we've already worked super closely together before that. Um, but I think you know, you're gonna see more and more of that from our team where we're really thinking about analytics, um, not just about BI, not just about data warehousing, not just about Spark, but all of these things coming together, data integration, everything. Um, because we know at the end of the day, uh, it's all about bringing these end-to-end -end analytics solutions uh, to the business and getting getting answers, getting insights, right? Yeah, 100%. It's so exciting. I mean, all of the things that, I mean, we, we're going to go through so much today and, you know, announcements at Build, new stuff, how we put stuff together. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. And then I can't really, I mean, we both can't say what's coming up, but I'm super excited for the future as well. So it's not just what's here now, but how 
Power BI and Azure Synapse Analytics together are evolving. It's just amazing. It's such it's just such a beautiful thing. You know, you touched on a point, and I just want to switch gears. You touched on a point earlier about how long you've been with Power BI. Um, what's it been like to be working with Power BI from the beginning? Oh, it's been a blast. And I've learned so much. And, and you know, I feel so lucky to be part of this community where um, we have a group of customers, partners, users, the team, where nobody's shy about telling us what's working and what's not. And so honestly, it makes my life as a product manager a world easier when you guys actually tell us what you need and what you want and give us feedback directly. Um, so it's it's been so rewarding. And I think, you know, for me, the thing that uh, keeps me on this team that has kept me, you know, so excited to come to work every day is just the, the opportunities we can create for people using our products, right? And I love these stories about people who, you know, maybe worked in finance or in the business or whatever and learned Power BI, changed their careers, grew their career, got promoted, found some insight they never would have found, changed their business. You know, that just, um, it's super rewarding for me and there's just nothing better than that, right? Totally, totally. Oh, look, I, I concur and I love that Power BI is one of, you know, many businesses at Microsoft, but I believe that Power BI, you know, developed according to the community feedback. I mean, that whole feedback loop at the beginning was just unprecedented. And, you know, yeah. we love the community and it's great that, you know, that, that we respond like that. And yeah, it's it's been amazing, right? <laughs> it's been a whirlwind and, and Power BI has come so far in the last uh, few years. And uh, it's just uh, the things our customers are asking us for now, you know, years ago, I could only have ever dreamed that that would be the problems that we have, right? That, um, you know, people just want more. So it's great. Yeah. And, and I, I know people have joined for Power BI um, information and, and knowledge and connection with the community here on the show. But also, you know, we have the Azure Synapse Analytics piece, you know, that's very closely connected to Power BI. So can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what is Azure Synapse and um, what is, sorry, what is Azure Synapse Analytics for those who are perhaps new or for those who want to learn more? Yep. Azure Synapse Analytics is our end-to-end -end analytics solution um, for enterprise customers and, and for customers large and small, honestly. And um, it encompasses a number of things that you need to get your analytics project up and running. And one of the things that, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time, especially with analytics, with, with Synapse customers, um, and a lot of customers, you kind of see what their architecture look like, looks like. And it's tons of lines and boxes and lots of products getting integrated and you have to pay for a bunch of different things all at once. And it's yeah. just to, at the end of the day, why do you do it? Why do you build a data warehouse? You build it so that the business can get insights. You build it so that a business user can do something about the data, right? And so the more I talk to customers, the more it's obvious that it just takes too long to get these analytics solutions up and running, right? Mm -hmm. And so Synapse brings together data integration. So how do you get the data in from wherever it may be? Um, how it brings together uh, data warehousing, which is the cornerstone of you know, the analytics projects in pretty much every state. It also brings in Spark. So things like um, data engineering, machine learning, data science. Um, and it brings in some of our newer capabilities like uh, Data Explorer. So this is for telemetry analytics. So it's okay. it's an engine that's really optimized for observational data, st streaming data, telemetry, that sort of thing. And bringing all these engines together into one solution, and of course, deep integration with Power BI into it, makes it so that you can get this one thing and you can use the right engine for the right job. And at the end of the day, again, just how quickly can you get to users, how quickly can you get to the business? Um, and that's the the thing I'm just so excited about with analytics that there's just you know a, a huge time suck in this integration aspect of it, as opposed to just working with the data. Um, so the faster we can you know make our users, uh, the better they're prepared to work with the data. The you know more they they can grow their careers, the more that they can grow their businesses and and empower business users. A hundred percent. I think that's such a key piece, especially in, uh, you know, in larger organisations, there's a lot more complexity in the small to medium business. You know, you've got your mom and pop, um, mom and pop shops. Is that, is that what they call it? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Where it, It's really tough to bring those pieces together. You know, you might have invoices from here and, you know, data coming in from your bank here. And I love that we're putting all of those pieces together and solving that issue because, 
it just makes it so much easier. It's so awesome. And and then, yeah. you know, with the Power BI piece, how does Power BI then, um, how does Synapse relate to Power BI? Yeah, so, you know, Power BI is the the thing that the entire business sees, right? Yeah. It's the thing that, you know, millions of people work with every day. They work with it in Teams. They work with it in Excel and PowerPoint now. Um, and, you know, this is what the business users see. But okay. everything leading up to that number being the correct number, that's coming from somewhere, right? Um, and there's tons of sources people are using in Power BI. Um, but this is where when we think about, you know, large scale enterprise customers, mm -hmm. really, you know, important machine learning projects, data science projects, like the data needs to come from somewhere, right? Um, and we want to make Azure Synapse Analytics the best place to work with when it comes to Power BI. Now, of course, the other connectors aren't going anywhere. The other data warehouses are, you know, super Starting. for us, yeah. right? They're, they're still critical. Um, but we really, you know, it comes back to the whole, how many steps does it take to, to get your answer, to get your number? Um, and our goal is to just reduce the number of steps and you know, we saw this in BI years ago that it used to be you had to go file a ticket with the business to get a report built or to get a measure changed or something. And now it's just like anybody's doing it. Um, and we that's that's the dream. Right. And we want to do that for uh, the earlier parts of the stack as well. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. I mean, it really is. And so for those of you who want to learn more about that, you know, you can go to all of our um, sites. There's a whole bunch of stuff at Build, which was my next point. And you, you may have noticed I'm taking notes as well while you're talking. So I'm like, okay, I've got to go and study up on this and this and that. Um, but I remember in Build, we had some great Power BI updates. And I would love for you to, you know, maybe reiterate or just you know, tell us a little bit more about that because I loved Build and I loved all of the Power BI and the Azure Synapse Analytics content. It was fantastic. And I find myself revisiting it all the time because yeah. as I grow my skill set, you know, um, I just keep adding more with these um, with these great presentations. Um, yeah, so, I yeah. feel the same way. Honestly, so much comes out uh, at an event like Build. You're just like, right. how do I even keep track of it? So, right. yeah, and I, I brought a couple of my you know, favorite uh, oh. uh, that I wanted to talk about, highlight, maybe remind people of, tell them to go check out more detail if they want to learn more, um, especially when it comes to this kind of um, Power BI and Synapse uh, theme that we got going. Okay. Uh, so so tell us more about some Power BI updates from Build then. What have yeah, what is so up there? One isn't really a Power BI specific update. Okay. Um, it's uh, we introduced uh, what we were calling the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. Um, and this uh, was basically the entire theme of Rohan Kumar's session at Build was around this introduction. And so the Intelligent Data Platform really brings to light the fact that when our customers are working with data, data is not just analytics or just an operational database. It's the whole thing, right? Um, because the data flows between them. and Again, coming back to that theme of it's customers are spending a ton of time making sure these things work together. Uh, and so the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform really brings that promise of, hey, we're going to make it really easy for you to work with your data all over, right? Whether it's in your operational databases, whether you want to do analytics on it, um, and of course, across all of these things, making sure you can govern, monitor, make sure people are doing the right thing. Um, and so that's really kind of the, the big uh announcement in terms of this overarching theme that you're going to continue to see. And there's a ton of product truth today. And you're going to continue to see a lot of new stuff come in this area over the next year, years. Um, so I'm personally really excited about this because, uh, you know, especially Power BI and Synapse coming together, but also us working really closely with SQL and with Purview, like all of these things coming together, uh, just it's going to save customers so much time. Yeah, this is fantastic. And did I see some special animation there in your PowerPoint? Yeah, let me see if I can click it and uh, get, get my animation. Thought, oh, sorry. There we go. Yeah, is it wow. Check it out. Um, my little, um, the, the lines moving. Uh, I love that. I love that because it, it shows, you know, all the little pieces flowing through together. Exactly. And, and, you know, I have another slide just talking about an example of how this comes to life. Um, and that's Synapse Link. Um, so Synapse Link is this concept of taking your operational data. So say, you know, say you have a SQL database that's running your retail website, 
right? Um, in a previous life, I worked on a, a retail site as a PM and we had a SQL database that stored all our order data, right? And that needed to be super performant because anytime somebody clicked buy now, you know, that SQL database was getting updated. Um, but we also always need to do analytics on that stuff, right? Because say I want to go, you know, check how usage is doing. Say I want to see which products are getting the most sales so I can reorder more. Um, the, there's this painful step that customers have needed to take where either they query directly the operational database and they slow it down, they put load on it. Um, and that's super risky, especially in, you know, really mission critical operational databases, or they spend a bunch of time moving that data into uh, a, an analytics store like Synapse or any data warehouse. And Synapse Link really solves that pain point in that there is a single click button where you can go and say, do analytics on my operational database. And we will ETL that data into Synapse in near real time and manage that ETL back and forth. So now you can separate your operational store from your analytics store. So your analytics people can go party. You can go do machine learning on it. You can connect it to Power BI, all that good stuff without worrying about putting any extra load on the operational store, whether it's Cosmos, SQL, or even Dataverse and Dynamics. That is awesome. And for those who are not aware of the ETL acronym, oh. um, you know, I have a form of dyslexia, so I like to always uh, let people know that's uh, extract, transform, and load. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> I got it right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so this is spectacular. Synapse Link is awesome. I love the anal the analytics piece. The go and order, go and analyze it for me. Tell me what you can yep. find. Yeah. Well, I'd love to know more about that. I mean, that's a whole other show. You know, how do they yeah, go about, you know, programming, you know, the, the whole analytics piece? I just, yeah. I, I'm constantly astounded by all of yeah, that. Yeah, and I think, you know, especially our Power Platform uh, buddies, whether it's Power Apps, Power Automate, you know, like the connection with Dataverse is super critical. Mm -hmm. um, because, again, it's like, do you, you know, spending a bunch of time stringing these products together to make them work. We don't want you to do that, right? Like we just yeah. want you to get to the insights as fast as possible. Um, and we're seeing a ton of awesome usage on Dataverse. Dataverse and Cosmos are already GA with Synapse Link and uh, the SQL Synapse Link uh, experience just went into public preview. Um, so uh, super excited to, to see the usage there and um, to get feedback. And it's definitely worth a, a follow-up session um, because it's so critical both for Power Platform users, for Power BI, and, of course, uh, on the Synapse side as well. Yeah, and you always, you and Arun and, you know, the whole Power BI and, and Synapse team, they're like, it's all about driving a data culture at organisations mm -hmm. or, or, you know, with, or, within organisations. So I love that. And, and, you know, one of the things that we talk about is how do you, as an organisation, when you're doing any project, how do you how do you begin? You shouldn't. You should always begin with a project plan, but you should also include your data and reporting and what you want okay. to extract right at the beginning. So then down the pipeline, you've got everything, you know, set up and ready. So Power BI can give you those actionable insights. So super oh, excited yeah. about that. <laughs> so, so what else can you tell us about Azure Synapse Analytics? Yeah, so you know, I'll switch gears for a second. And this isn't is this isn't about Synapse. This is about Power BI now. Okay. And uh, we introduced a new capability wow. called Power BI Data Marts. And so um, Power BI Data Marts solves the problem of business users have data warehouses, critical data sitting all over the place, right? Um, but when it comes time to make an update, to include your own data, to, to make changes, there's a huge backlog on, on IT, on the higher code developers um, to make those changes. And so... What ends up happening is customers end up emailing Excel files around. They end up creating their own data sets, like, and, and different versions of the truth start floating around. Um, and at the same time, you lose some functionality when you do that, right? Because one of the great things about a data warehouse, right, is SQL. And this SQL is just, you know, there's such an ecosystem around people who know how to use SQL, who can work with SQL, so many tools aside from Power BI that work with SQL. So data marts is actually a self-service relational database built into Power BI. Um, so you can build essentially a SQL-based data mart with all low code, all no code, and 
share it around in Power BI. And let me just jump to my next screen to kind of show the highlights. So um, you can ingest the data using data flows, which uh, Power BI users all know and love. <laughs> we have unified semantic models, which means that you can build this data mark and you can build the, you know, the relationships once, you can build the security rules once, and they're kept in sync, whether it's in SQL or in Power BI data sets and analysis services. And this is something that customers are spending a ton of time making sure uh, they duplicate these efforts back and forth. And it's just, uh, you know, how, how can we make it easier to just get to those insights? And then finally, um, integrated governance. So of course, um, deep integration with Microsoft Purview and with the Power BI platform like sensitivity labels, lineage, endorsement, deployment pipelines. And so you get the power of a data mart, but you also get the ease of use of Power BI because it's just Power BI. You can use you know, Power Query that you know and love, Power BI report authoring you know and love. And by the way, um, one of the really cool things that I'm personally very excited about, it's been a long time coming, is the basis of web authoring um, in Power BI. So you can do modeling, you can do relationship, you, you can write DAX in the web, um, which is something personally I've been wanting to see forever. So I'm really glad it's finally here. I, I love that we've done that. This is fantastic. We, um, we, it was interesting. I talked with uh, Will Thompson last time and I said, hey, we're going back to the service model because remember we didn't have desktop at the beginning. Yep, yep. So we're kind of coming uh, full circle. And, you know, I love that we're going to be able to model in the web. And, yep, you yep. know, out of all of the, these things, the one thing that I really think is super important, especially in these privacy kind of GDPR, all of these um, laws and regulations coming out from countries and states. I love that we have the MIP labels that follow our data. I don't think any other product does that. And that's such a critical part of governance that we do for our customers. I mean, that is an entire, you know, some organizations need entire teams to be able to track, you know, where that data is going. And yeah. now that, that we have those MIP labels, MIP labels following it. And I know it's been around for a little bit, you know, just a few months from last year, but I just, I love that piece because it takes so much of that um, governance lift away. It's been so. super mission critical for customers. Even within Microsoft, I was just having a, a conversation with our own um, Microsoft admins of Power BI and they just rely on those MIP labels. Like, you know, that has to be there and uh, they can't imagine a world without it. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's just, Every customer I talk to, it, like, you know, it's just wild uh, that we, we lived in a world where we didn't have the ability to, you know, mark something as highly confidential or super sensitive. And then it flows from Synapse to Power BI to Excel if you export it, to PowerPoint if you export it, like the whole thing. So it's just um, super critical uh, for, for customers to prevent accidental data leaks or anything like that. It's, it, I, I just, that's one of my favorite, favorite features. You know, it's just, it's amazing. So, yeah. yeah and and I think it also helps when you're presenting a report and you're saying hey this is what our report is about you know it's all about data storytelling and within that data story within that storytelling scenario we're saying please don't share please yep. you know yep. make sure that you know you're mindful please understand the privacy you know of this yeah. of this report so I love that that it also people might think oh it's a governance thing but no it's actually helping with data storytelling Critical. yeah and and you know the other thing I love about it is for Power BI one of the themes we've had forever is this theme of PowerPoint for data right which yeah. is it should be as easy to use as office right and so data shouldn't be different than if you were writing a PowerPoint doc or a Word doc in terms of how you manage it, right? And sensitivity labels are just so, it's bread and butter for office, right? Um, and it just fits in that same theme of like, data shouldn't be different than other office content, right? A hundred percent. And I love I love that we're, you know, our ribbons and everything are also integrating and, you know, it's it's a, gr it's a great way. It's, it's yeah. a great evolution that we're making it so much simpler for, for everybody. I, yeah. I, just, I just love it. So, you know, data storytelling is something that I know that we were going to, um, talk about, and I think it's probably a well, good segue to go well, into before that. Before we do that, I do have a demo of data marts. Um, oh, sorry, oh, you do. Um, you so, data oh, you have a data yeah. demo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, so I'm not doing it live, unfortunately, because uh, <laughs> it already did one for me, and she's much faster at the clicks, and I know we don't have a ton of time. So um, Priya Safi, who runs uh, the uh, data warehousing team and the data marts team, 
Um, she filmed the demo uh, just to see it in action. It's a few minutes. So um, maybe for folks who haven't seen Priya's session, um, just a quick taste. And then if you want to learn more, there's a whole build session where you can see it in lots of detail. Well, I'd love to say, I just want to do a shout out to Gotham Darini um, and yes. Charles, Charles and I think Priya, is, is it Priyanka? Uh, yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Priyanka, that's right, Priyanka yep. as well. I mean, awesome yeah. job. They really support our MVPs and they've really helped us along. So shout out. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. I'm in my Power BI workspace, which is a premium per user workspace. I see that I can create a new artifact type called Datamart. I click on this and a Datamart, which is a fully managed SQL database, is created for me. I have access to over 150 different data sources. For this demo, I have data in my SQL Server database and I want to do order analytics. So I'm going to choose this. I go ahead and enter my server details, my database name, and enter my credentials. And I click Next. When I'm authenticated, I am presented with the full list of tables I have access to. I go ahead and I choose a few tables. I can see the data along the way, and I ask Datamart to select all the related tables. Now I'm ready to start transforming my data. Transforming data is a very familiar Power Query transformation experience. I can do so many different transforms without having to write a single line of code. I can filter rows, do group bys. And when I'm done, I hit save. Datamart with the tables are automatically created for me. A data flow with the ETL is also generated and data is loaded. I'm now ready to start exploring the data in the various tables. I can explore data by writing a query. I go ahead and click on New Query. Now, this brings me to a visual query building experience. I can just build a query by dragging and dropping the tables into the canvas. For this demo, I drag and drop the customers and the orders tables and I can see the data in the tables every step of the way. Datamarts also comes with a SQL editor with full IntelliSense. As a pro who knows T-SQL, I can write my own SQL query. Here I have a SQL query joining the orders tables and the customers tables just like we did before. Lastly, let me show you how easy it is to connect to this Datamart using any SQL tool. I go into the settings of the Datamart Get the SQL endpoint and open up SQL Server Management Studio and connect to this data mark. I can execute my SQL query just like I normally would and explore the data. That's how easy it is to ingest and prep data. In Power BI, data sets has the metrics the business want to track. With Datamart, I do not need to create the data set. One is generated for me. Now, before I show you how to set up these measures, a performant data mart needs relationships between tables. When I click on the modeling view in the data mart, I see the data mart has already detected relationships from the data source. I can view the details, modify them, and easily add my own relationships by just dragging and dropping the fields from the different tables. This is important if I decide to bring in my own data and blend with this data. Now, the data mart comes BI ready. I can create measures, which are the business semantics right within this UI. I create a new measure under the orders table called total freight as a sum of freight by writing DAX code. I have full DAX editor with IntelliSense right here. I can now see this measure I just created under my orders table. This is the first time you're seeing modeling on the web. Gradually, you'll be able to do everything in Power BI Desktop right here. Datamart brings the relational database model and the semantic model together in the simple interface and keeps them both in sync. Now, I want to set up refresh on my Datamart. Now, I have full refresh capability, but what I'm really interested in is incremental refresh. As data grows, I want to make sure that my users' reports are updated quickly. So incremental refresh lets me bring in data that's changed in a table. Here, I'm setting up incremental refresh on the orders table by specifying a few parameters, and that's it. I'm done. 
Now the orders table will be updated incrementally when data changes. I want to share this data mart with Arun. I pick his name and go ahead and grant him access. Now Arun will receive an email with a link to this data mart. When he opens the data mart, he's taken directly to the data mart in the data hub. Let me show, show you the experience. I'm in the data hub. I go ahead and I can see the data mart I just created. When I click on it, I'm taken to a page where I can see actions I can take. I see the TDS endpoint and I can use that to connect to this data mart with SQL. I click on create from scratch and I go ahead and see the data set that was auto-generated by the data mart. I see all of the tables. If you recall, I had the order table and in the orders table, I had created a new measure under a display folder called freight. And I see it all here. I just want to go ahead and test total freight. I drop it in the canvas and I see my total freight. That's it. From this point on, I can start building the report and I can build amazing reports just like this one very easily with data marts. Yeah, so I mean, you just saw basically we built an entire data mart, loaded data into SQL, managed permissions, all that like in five minutes, right? Uh, so this is something that just was impossible to do before and I'm so excited to see how it gets used uh, in Power BI. Oh, you're muted, Kelly. Sorry, I was watching on the, I was watching on the, um, the YouTube uh, stream on my other, uh, on my other screen because it was a bit larger, and I'm like, oh my gosh, five minutes, five yeah. minutes. That's all it took. It's crazy. That's all it took. It's fantastic, and I'm hoping everyone heard. Was the volume a little bit low? Or was it okay? It was good for me. Yeah, it was. It was good for me. I just turned it up a little bit, but um, it was good. Yeah, it was. I love Priya. She's so quick with. Yeah creating all of that I'd, I'm not that fast <laughs> you know, and, and credit to the team that they really and and it's going to get better and better in terms of they are really thinking about just how many clicks does it take how long especially perf performance has been like top top of mind um, and that's something we are spending a ton of time making sure we get better and better there so um, you know those are the things that really matter especially when it comes to uh, business users right like they, they don't have time to sit around waiting for the data. They got other stuff. I mean, nobody has time to sit around waiting for the data, but especially a business user whose job is not necessarily data, right? Their job is something else and they're using data as a means to an end. And data marts is really going to empower them. Yeah, hundred percent. It's it's so it's so fantastic. And I know a ton of our MVPs love it. And um, they they were fortunate enough to play with the feature a little bit early um, mm -hmm. and they they really helped us improve as well. So a shout out to the MVPs and the, the community out there. Okay. Well, let's get on to the next section here because I really love this one. This is a good one. Um, this, yeah. <laughs> you know, I keep saying my personal favorite, my personal favorite. This one's also my personal favorite. Um, and it's been a long time coming and it's storytelling and PowerPoint. Um, data is all about the story you tell, right? It's about you know, not only presenting the data, but helping businesses understand what to do with it. So, uh, you know, I have this beautiful skateboard store report here. And of course, the typical usage in PowerPoint is somebody takes a screenshot, paste it in, but then inevitably somebody asks the question of, you know, but what about the data? What if we did this? What if we did that? And so we now have live Power BI reports embedded in PowerPoint. So you can, you know, use tool tips the way you, you know, normally would. You can slice and dice. So I can go ahead and cross highlight and the data is going to update. I can use all the AI visuals uh, like natural language query. So this just changes the game for how you present, right? And it's funny because um, we've been using it internally for quite some time, testing it, finding all the bugs, all that. And I was in a review with a room the other day where we had a live report and he literally like took the mouse away from us and started clicking and playing around with it and like took over the presentation, exploring the data. Um, so it just <laughs> creates a totally different type of meeting. Um, and just the things you can do in PowerPoint, it's just, it's really so, so exciting um, to see this live. And it's super easy to use. You basically go to any Power BI report, click export Power BI, and you pick live instead of a screenshot. 
um, and also in, or sorry, PowerPoint, um, you export to PowerPoint. And then in PowerPoint, um, it's starting to roll out um, to all office clients. There's an insert Power BI button right in PowerPoint. Um, so if you're in some of the Office Insider builds, you're already seeing it and it's going to start to roll and roll out to more and more um, office clients. So honestly, this one just, uh, you know, we talked about building a data culture. This is it, right? This is the data culture because this is PowerPoint is where these conversations are happening. This is where meetings are happening. Um, so this one is just and the usage is already skyrocketing. So I know people love it, but um, I'm, I'm thrilled about this one. I I am particularly excited about this because for those of you who have worked with me for a short or long period of time, you know that I cannot. I I'm so hopeless at PowerPoint. I I know what looks nice, but I feel like I don't have that design eye. And um, but Power BI is you know my thing. So I love creating the reports, but now all I have to do is go under my little picture up in the top right-hand corner. Yeah, yeah. And then share to probably, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. This is the other thing that I've already seen happening. So, um, you know, we do a lot of business reviews where we update Rune on the business and how usage is going and retention and yep. all that stuff. So we have a bunch of standard reports we always use to report on this in Power BI. And every time we have these reviews, um, Hayden on my team has to go produce the the power the PowerPoint deck, PowerPoint. take the screenshots, write the insights, like, it, and it's a process every time, right? And now, literally, I copy and paste the slide from last time, which has the live report. The data is up to date. You know, then I'll maybe write my highlights and lowlights in PowerPoint next to it, mm -hmm. or you know, write some detail. But it's just like business reviews have completely changed, and the amount of overhead that we used to have on just producing that content is just gone. Um, yep. So it's really fun. Absolutely. I think it's just revolutionized it's definitely the way I do power, sorry, my PowerPoint presentations, because at the end of the day, I think everybody uses PowerPoint, right? Hey, we'll do a PowerPoint slide and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it does, it's a heavy lift. And I, I just love it so much. And I yeah. used to I used to say, hang on a second, let me show you on the Power BI report. And I'd stop and then exactly. let's present the Power BI and da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, coming back to the PowerPoint for data theme, right? Like we just don't want business users to have to go jump around to get the data, right? The data should go where the business users are and they're in PowerPoint and there's no better tool on this planet that is for, for telling stories, right? Like PowerPoint is the de facto way you present. And so the fact that instead of users coming to us, we are going to users. Um, I think that's, yeah. that's the game changing piece of it. Yeah, I've seen some really interesting uses of that too. It's it's been fantastic. I think we might include a uh, PowerPoint Power BI challenge on one of our monthly challenges. So Love our that. awesome community managers, Heather Hernandez, and uh, who leads our community managers here, uh, who who runs them here, um, and also we have Eileen. And we also have Natalie, who are amazing, and they've helped a lot with those challenges. Shout out to our community managers, everyone. So yeah. if they message you, respond, please, because we've got a couple out there that we need you to respond to <laughs> as well. Um, yes. Oh, my gosh, there's so much here. I'm just I'm looking at all of the things that, that we've gone through. Have we got anything else like, for example, linking things? I'm hearing the word link in my head here. Synapse link to SQL? Maybe. Oh, we already talked about Synapse Link. No, 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 but there's another, there was another piece to that. There's a call to action where we've got the build um, the build link. So, so I have a slide. So one of the things I did want to call out is just the community. I love the Power BI community, like I said. Okay. This okay. community has built our product, right? Um, and on the Synapse side, we're really learning from that. Yeah and trying to uh, beg, borrow, and steal everything that has worked in Power BI over in Synapse. No, so, um, you know, if you pop up the slide, one of the things we're literally doing is mirroring all the great processes we have in the Power BI community. Um, so the monthly Power BI blog, I know this group, everybody tuning in, looks at that Power BI blog every month. Um, we now have a monthly Azure Synapse blog where everything that we ship, we summarize once a month so you can see it end to end across data warehouse, data integration, and Spark uh, and, and Data Explorer. And then same for the ideas forum. We really, you know, we want that feedback. We want to hear what's blocking you from using Synapse. Get, tell us those ideas the same way you do on Power BI. And then of course, same with learning paths uh, because 
Uh, I know there's a lot of folks out there that have never used Synapse and we really do want to um, get you started and also hear your feedback. Exactly. So it's linking everything together, going into all of those areas. We've got the Power BI um, monthly blog, the ideas forum, the learning paths, Azure Synapse uh, blog, Synapse ideas, and also Azure Synapse learning path. I love all of those links. They're, they're like a mirror image of each other. That's what's all the it's links. That. It's, it's not an accident. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm like, link, 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 link. Yeah. <laughs> And I know it's Azure Synapse link, but, you know, a bit of a pun there. I know yeah. it's a geeky joke. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people didn't get it. It's kind of. Can't help it. Can't resist yeah, I know. It. That's why I'm not a comedian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about putting, you know, getting, meeting people where they are in their data in yeah. PowerPoint, giving them the resources to learn, and then driving a data culture in their organizations. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so awesome. I know we've got a ton of comments that have been coming in. Daniel, any uh, questions or comments that people have put in the community? Let's have a look, Kim. What do you think? Oh, can we do oh, some of the PowerPoint animations? animations. So um, today, functionally, what the Power BI integration is, is it's an add-in. Um, so the the basically, it's an iframe in your slide. So you can animate that that holistically in or out, and you can do things there. Within Power BI reports, you can't do animations yet. Uh, if you talk to Amir about this, he'll uh, talk your ear off about what he wants to do there. And of course, uh, we want to get there at some point. But today, really, the animation is at the entire report level within the slide. Um, uh, but I would love to hear the feedback on what do you guys want to do? What do you want to see? Um, because this could be super cool if we did it right. I know like that that would just be huge. So I love that idea. 100%, 100%. And then we also have, I, I'm busting for the animation piece, yeah. by the way, because yeah. I like moving pictures. It kind of helps me digest sure. data. Actually, you can imagine, like, you know, the New York Times has all these really cool infographics where as you scroll, like, animations happen. So uh, it's a dream of mine to get to that. One day we'll get to it. Yeah, and and I think we'll do it. I think we'll do yeah. it. What do you reckon, yeah? <laughs> okay, we've got another one. I uh, love the Synapse idea. How much is it going to cost? Yeah, so um, there's a ton of pricing calculators on online that you can go look at. So it's a big question to answer, um, but it is priced quite competitively uh, versus our competitors. And the other thing you can do because it's part of Azure, you can sign up and get those free credits um, and, and get started really easily. Um, and then the the other cool thing is they're they're Azure resources, so you can turn them off when you're not using them, and you can you know spin them up and down and all that good stuff. So uh, the how much it's going to cost uh, question, you know, I, I would recommend looking at the the calculators. Um, the other thing I want to plug, um, oh, I wish I had a link, is um, we have a, a really good docs page um, called uh, Synapse. Um, oh my gosh, Success by Design, um, and our our CAT team actually wrote up a bunch of documentation to talk about best practices and how to really do Synapse the best way possible. Um, so that's something if you're trying to figure out at scale how to do this efficiently and in great performance and the right price, um, Success by Design uh, on our docs page is a really good resource as well. I, I have that. I just looked oh, up um, Success by right? Design and put in Synapse. And I put that in our, um, in our uh, production chat. So we might create an AKA link for that. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. We can put that in the show notes later um, if that's okay. So, yeah, that's a really good one. And it's got the proof of concept playbook. It's got everything. It's got yeah. the, white, the security white paper. It has the Synapse implementation success method. So there's a lot of recommended content there, a lot of great content if you're, uh, if you're inter interested in going there. So, Daniel, did you want to? Oh, okay. We've got another question. Um, so we will put that link for the Synapse, um, excuse me, Success by Design in the show notes. So look out for that. Okay. Um, I want to understand how Power BI can help COE to COE. So I think COE in this context is center of excellence. Yes. Um, and so there's a ton of documentation again, but from our CAT team on, on our docs pages around best practices for building a center of excellence. Um, our CAT team just lives and breathes this. Um, so uh, that's another one where maybe we could find the, the resources and link them in the show notes. Um, another person to follow, uh, I'll give a shout out to Matthew Roche, 
who oh. blogs about a lot of this stuff. Um, so you can go find him on Twitter or, uh, you know, search, search for his blog, um, because he is super passionate about this space and works a lot across the community to kind of gather best practices and, and share those out. Yeah. Love Matthew Roche. Let me just grab his Twitter. It is on my phone here. Uh, do you have that handy there, Kim? Or let me just. Oh, something father. Father. Yeah. Hang on. Let me lay that loose. I'm just, I'm doing a quick search here. This is this is live, everyone. So this is how quickly I can search, which is not very quickly. Here we go, Roche. R O C. Equal all father. At, on Twitter. I got you, Kelly. Over here. You see, this is how that's that's how fast I am. Not fast at all. <laughs> yep, yep. So thank you. So we'll do a shout out to Matthew. I love Matthew so much. And by the way, for those of you who don't know Matthew Roach, not is not only is he intelligent, but he is a spectacular, spectacular foodie chef, yeah. cook. And he, he actually just moved away from the Seattle area, but he baked us a lot of baked goods uh, throughout the years. Yeah, he's amazing. He's just amazing. So I'm going to miss him so much. Um, yeah. Aww. No, yeah, so <laughs> I love this question on how to start a career as a data analyst. I get this one a lot. So first of all, the Power BI learning paths, powerbi.microsoft.com uh, slash learning, um, tons of free resources uh, mm -hmm. that you can just get started. Um, the other thing I'll shout out, and I'm sure uh, Kelly agrees with me on this, a huge resource is the Power BI user groups. So if you're trying to get started, go into a user group, learning, talking to other people. Um, the really cool thing here is people who are looking for jobs or hiring, they also go there. So I've seen so many connections made that way. Mm -hmm. And especially in this crazy market, um, one of the things you should definitely do is build up your local network in a Power BI user group um, because there's so many people hiring for these roles. It's so hard to find amazing analysts and amazing people who can work with data. Um, so Definitely take all the learning courses and then connect on your Power BI user groups. Thank you. And I, I agree 100% with um, with Kim. And as Heather Newman says, yes and. Um, <laughs> go to the community if you're already a Power BI user and ask on the forums. There's a ton yes. of people there, super users, MVPs. The product team is there answering questions as well sometimes. You never know, right? We also have a great support engineering um, team that, that uh, responds to your questions. So go and ask them. Um, and we also, if you want to really start a, a big career, I think absolutely MS Learn is a great place to start. And when you go and uh, into MS Learn, there's a bunch of courses. And if MS Learn's not your place, go back to the community and go into the learning section here, where is, and I feel like I'm presenting my screen, but I'm not. But you can go into uh, the resources section and go to learn and then there's self-guided learning so start there start yeah. there we we would love to have you and if you want to join the power bi team speaking of hiring kim mm -hmm. all of our power bi jobs at microsoft are under aka.ms forward slash power bi jobs yeah so yeah. we post our jobs there if you're interested in joining us join us go yeah. and apply yeah would love to have you Absolutely. Well, this has been insanely wonderful and informative as Super usual. Awesome. So what do you have? Um, anything in the next couple of months? Or like, can you come back and, and tell us? I would love to come back. We have plenty mm -hmm. in the works, as we always do. Um, so nothing I can share just yet, but I'm... I would love to come back and join <laughs> you guys anytime. Um, you know, like I said, this is the why I do this job. The funnest part is connecting with the community. Uh, and helping everybody, you know, do more with their data. So uh, anything I can do, anytime you want to hear me chat, I'm happy to spend <laughs> as much time as you allow. <laughs> you heard it here first. Kim's coming back on the show. Yay! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! This is great. So thank you so much, Kim. Cool. We so much appreciate you and your time and everything your team does. But um, stick around. We're going to talk about the Charticulator Challenge. Uh, winners, I know that your wonderful team has put together this challenge. I know Rianne and um, and our community managers have worked together to put that together. Um, and it's people who have um, submitted, have gone and learned or already know a little bit about Charticulator and submitted their Charticulator 
um, uh, uh, what what am I looking Visual. for? Visual uh, to <laughs> to the community, and people voted on it. We also had um, an MVP come through and have a look at all of those um, Charticulator submissions. And we went through those last week, our community managers, MVPs and the product team, and we decided on a few. Let's hear it. Before we went. So here we go. Okay. Now, Natalie, I'm not sure if you want to jump on or not, but we do have, uh, here we go. I'm just going to our little chat here. So we have 11 people who are going to get lanyards and, uh, for participation, so thank you for participating. We're going backwards, you know, like they do in those um, competitions, yeah. like in um, I know everybody's waiting. For American them. Idol. Okay, the seventh runner-up. Commercial break. Yeah, commercial <laughs> break. Right? Um, and then, hi Natalie. Hi. Yeah. So thank you so much. Hi. Uh, Natalie restarted our challenges every month. Kim, Natalie, I think you guys know each other anyway. Mm -hmm. You know each other. Yes. Um, and so we're super excited. Natalie will be running um, a lot of those challenges um, every month. So we have 11 people who won lanyards. And then what else? Four are going to get, uh, I think four will get top community kudo posts. And that is, I've got their usernames, Vandalitic, Vahid, Kirkol, and DMP. They're going to get mouse pads. And then the three users who are going to receive their socks for the best technical and design elements are da, 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 username Kerkol, K-E-R-K-O-L, uh, Ruth Pozuelo, woohoo, I know Ruth, hi Ruth, yeah. <laughs> and then and DMP. So thank you everybody for participating. We will be reaching out to you. Well, Natalie, Heather or Eileen or all three <laughs> will be reaching out to you through the community, um, through your username inbox. Check out your inbox and you'll probably get an email by the end of the week with your codes to redeem all of your beautiful things that you've won. And thank you so much for taking the time. Natalie, which one was your favourite? Oh, I had so many, but I have to share that um, my son is a big soccer fan and yeah. so he loved the two charticulators that involved soccer. So, yeah. um, but they were all spectacular. I was just kind of in awe looking at them and interacting with them. So it was a great, it was a great experience for me. And um, they were just beautiful, beautiful designs. Yeah. Is there Absolutely. a link where we can see yeah. them? All? Yeah, and, and Daniel, it's um, Chartic, and say Charticulator three times fast. Charticulator. <laughs> it's Charticulator Challenge. Uh, here it is. What's the AKA link? I've got it right here. Do, 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 do. Come on. Oh, for gosh sake. Okay, I've pasted it in there. Have you got that there now? You got that, Daniel? Did I did it come through? <laughs> no, not yet. Where where'd you paste it? I'll have a look. In your production thing. He, oh, here it is. Oh, sure. Challenge to twenty twenty two. Sure, I'll take a look. You have that one. AKA dot ms Charticulator Challenge twenty twenty two. And so, if you go to that pay that um that link there, you will absolutely be able to see all of our submissions. There are music submissions as well with the Charticulator thing. There's a Beatles one. Cool. There's also um, an activity wheel. There's a beautiful ribbon one it's i mean there's so many beautiful things here um go and go and let us know which one is your favorite and we might just pick a couple of people to uh to send something out so go interact with our community all right so kim what do you think about charticulator coming into the product now it was a big research uh project right and yeah, uh, I remember a really good partnership with microsoft research they built that completely you know on their own and then they partnered with us to figure out how we can deeply integrate it into the product how we can get more customer feedback i just love how the community has run away with it and has made it their own so it's just yeah it's amazing because you can build your own custom visuals it's just mm -hmm. it's just fantastic and thank you natalie and uh eileen and heather for all of your help with that again shout out and uh i know natalie jumped out just then so thank you again okay i think that brings us to the end of the show today I'm a bit sad because I want to just keep talking about Power BI. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we can do it again. <laughs> and we're on Twitter all the time talking about Power BI too. So. It's, true. it's true. Well, look, thank you again, Kim, for joining us. We appreciate you, everything that your team does. And thanks for teaching us so much more today. 
Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yay. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Well, that's a wrap for today. Please, please, please join us on the community. Go into PBI show, PBI show comment and let us know what you like, what you'd like to see and uh, what you'd like to see coming up and uh, what you'd like to see in the challenges. We've got some monthly challenges coming up and we'd be super excited for you to join us there. And as usual, we thank you for spending time with us. Join us on community.parabi.com and we'll see you, we'll meet you in the community.